Morning is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. Thanks so much for starting your day with me. 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading in the opening bell. And right now you're looking at an S&P negative by one point, trading at 43.49. Quite the resurgence this week from the lows we had on Monday, 42.24. Remarkable. We almost got it all back. We did get it all back, folks. You take a look at the daily on the S&P for some context here. You're bumping right up against all-time highs, 43.84. We're within yeah, about less than 40 points. You're talking about 36 points from all-time highs in the S&Ps. And check it out, folks. All right, I'm talking about in my program. This this channel line, this S&P is in. Just keep your eye on it because, you know, where exactly this lower and upper boundary line fall? I mean, the upper boundary line, how perfect does that match up on a series of higher highs across the board? You're going back to the run we had from November. Okay, now the lower side of that, you just pair some of the lows we had going back to the start of the run when we got the efficacy number on the vaccines. We dive down, uh, really the second dive we had. You had an early acceleration in January, the real first, real first pullback. Uh, I should say the first real pullback from the November run. We pull back January 26 from about 38.51 down to 36.73. I have to chuckle at such a small pullback when the entire trend goes from about 3,200 to almost 4,400. We pull back yet again in February. That was a real pullback that we had lasted a half a month, basically, from 39.18 we make a low of 37.20. What was the high there again? 39.20. Yeah, so about 200 S&P points. And boom, we accelerate out of the gate there. Now, you could, folks. You could, right? Maybe, maybe, just maybe, that line is creeping a little bit upward. Maybe you're looking, um, whoops, let me activate that drawing. Maybe you're looking at a little bit higher if we match up there. Point being, I mean, talk about a pretty sound channel line pretty well defined we've jumped you had that acceleration in june we fired out of the gate and just like that from the run that we had in terms of back on whoops excuse me a shorter term basis you're talking about the run that we had yes that was friday's action the acceleration lower is that right? Yes. It, uh, no, excuse me. That was Friday's action. There is Monday's bar, of course. The lows of Monday, and just like that, we accelerate back into the channel line. Now, if you start to accelerate to the top end of the channel line, you're talking about 4,500 plus in the S&Ps on that futures chart. NASDAQ 100, back to a 15-minute chart. We're going to get into the weekly initial jobless claims numbers in a moment. You have the NASDAQ 100 up by seven points, 14,836. Has been the strongest index for a long time, and still you could say the strongest index. Bumping right up against all-time highs. We're about 160 points from that price level. Dow lagging a bit, but right up near those highs as well. Dow's been bumping up against this 35,000 level. You could say for the better part of about two and a half months from about May 7th, we're back right near that level, about 30, 350 points from all-time highs in the Dow and the Russell. Talk about uh, some volatility in the Russell. You go from June 25th at 2346, you trade down to 2100. 246 points, almost a 10% drop, just like that. We were down to 2100, and boom, just like that as well. We're up 120 points from that level. You have almost a 4% pop going on in the Russell 2000. All right, crude's got some action to the upside here. Crude. Back to a 15 minute to see the action we've had. You were down to 6501 on Tuesday. We're trading at 7059. Gold contract with some action this morning as well. Gold was down to 1791. You really catch a spike at about 815. It really pops at 830 as well. We're up to 1803. And notes and bonds so far this morning. Pretty muted action in terms of where we have been. But boy, there was quite an acceleration from about 7 a.m. You trade from 133.28, really from about 8 a.m. almost 120. Excuse me, 133.28. We're now trading at 134.05, positive by two ticks, and we we'll jump over to the VIX for the volatility premium in this market. 17.96, a far cry from the 25.09 that we had last week, folks. If you're looking to buy any type of insurance, 
in this market. You can't be buying it when the VIX is spiking at 25 or 30. You can. It's just going to be so much more expensive. Okay. When you get some of these subsided moves to lows, now we've seen a series of lower lows and lower highs in the VIX, except for the, the spike that we just had on Monday, folks. All right. I got a lot of notations on this chart. When you back it up, I'm just going to back it up to a five year weekly, lock in all of these highs. Um, it was a very, very consistent series of really going for the entire calendar year that we're in. Okay. Lower lows, lower highs in the VIX as we kept continuing on. And then we get the spike that we had on Monday up to 25. We haven't seen a spike like that going back to May. And we've had a couple of highs and lows in that time that we're creeping lower. Okay. Let's get into the initial jobless claims number that we had at 830. A little bit of an uptick. Not what you probably want to see, but nothing too dramatic. Um, you know, the, the headline here, CNBC is always going for the clickbaits. Well above expectations. Folks, 70,000 jobs on an initial jobless claims basis is not going to make or break this economy when we got to make up eight or nine or even 10 million jobs. I mean, as this stretches on, we're supposed to have organic growth every single month. So we're about, what, seven or eight million jobs under where we were prior to the pandemic. Every month that marches on, we not only have to make up the jobs that we had prior to the pandemic going back to, we're now going back to March of 2020. You're talking about going back 16 months. You then have to incorporate and say, okay, what would have been the organic growth rate over those 16 months of job creation to have full employment? We should add those on top of the number that we need to make up as this drags on. It's going to be the better part of two years. So you're not only going to have to make up the eight, seven, eight million jobs that we're still missing. OK, and there are people who have left the workforce who aren't coming back. So I understand that. I factor that in seven or eight million jobs we have to make up. And then you got the people that we would have normally been adding to the job force through normal population growth, et cetera. That has to be added as well. We get a lot to make up. All right. So 40,000, 50,000 jobs. 60,000, 70,000 jobs when you're talking about an initial jobless claim, which is also going to have a lot of noise in it on this and isn't quite representative of what we need to see, which is the service economy and the travel opening up in gangbuster numbers, which is not quite happening as quickly as we had all hoped. Nonetheless, the number, we'll get to it, 419,000 for the weekend of July 17th, above the 350,000 estimate. Prior week was 360,000. 68,000 continuing claims decreasing by 126,000 to 3.24 million. There it is on the chart. I mean, you know, you're going to have some variance down here in terms of where we go. We were at 368. That was a pandemic fresh low last week. We're now at 419. You know, if you take a what you take a five, five number moving average, 10 number moving average, they use a seven day moving average, use a seven week moving average, whatever you want to use. Moving average is moving downward, folks. And this isn't going to throw too much of a wrench into that. Uh, in any way, there's your continuing claims declining as well. And what I always look for that they may have up later in uh, the analysis is I want to see the number of people who are on um, any type of economic assistance, because that is always a big number that incorporates the stimulus plans that they have passed. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're going to come back. We got some earnings out this morning uh, as well. Jumping around to some of the headlines out there. Domino's Pizza. Uh, with their numbers trading higher, Domino's from 470 to 481. We've got some airlines out as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's back to positive by a point right now. Nasdaq positive by 15, Dow negative by 15 points. We got the Russell negative by six points right now. Jumping around, as I mentioned, we got some companies uh, with their numbers. Domino's uh, with their numbers trading higher by about eleven dollars right now. Uh, and what else do we have? Who else is out? We got. Uh yeah, American and Southwest, the two airlines out this morning, checking around to them. American backing off a bit, down about 60 cents from where they were trading at. Um, and who else as well? Southwest, LUV, domestic, down a bit for the travel companies, but they've had quite a run over the last few days, trading higher in a big way. Check out the cruise ships, giving back some of the gains, it looks like, on some of the travel stocks, Norwegian, uh, giving back some of it as well. All right, folks, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market, Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey, the team over at TD Ameritrade Network, breaking down the market action, setting up hypothetical trades. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, big day today. We got a lot of, you know, the names are starting to pick up here in terms of pace of earnings. So today's show, we'll look at Twitter, we'll look at Snap. And we'll look at Intel today. So a, a big show, three high-profile names to trade today on Fast Market, Tommy. Yeah, it is pretty cool, Kevin. They're coming out. They're coming fast. Next week, you could call the main event uh, with all the tech stocks coming out with their numbers between Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And I'm generalizing, but all the big dogs, it seems, are in there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, we got some action this morning. Texas Instruments, they're down a decent amount, about 9 bucks. We got Domino's Pizza, Kevin, trading higher. The airline's pulling back a little bit, but, man, as we mentioned, they've had quite a run uh, over in the last few days. And we have, of course, initial jobless claims this morning. So you get a little bit of an uptick in that number, Kevin. Uh, we, we rise up to about 419,000. And I was saying at the start of the show, you know, CNBC and CNBC, I'm not usually a fan of, of and this is my preference, folks, of just the headlines. It's, it gets a little clickbaitish, you know, and they say well above expectations. And Kevin, the estimate's 350,000. We're coming in at 419. There's a lot of noise in these numbers on a weekly basis in terms of how they may vary. That's only 70,000 jobs. And it's a number that's not quite representative in my opinion, what we have to do in terms of bringing, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten million 10 million people back to the labor force. And you're talking about 70,000 jobs. Do you see this number? You know, it hasn't had much of an impact. S&P's kind of shake it off. But do you look to that number at all when you see that in terms of how it's shaping? Or where do you where do you kind of interpret that data right now? Well, Connie, the one thing I understand about 
high-frequency data. And remember, we get this every Thursday. It's just never a straight line, and it's never smooth. So one week does not um, deter me at all from a recovery that we all know down the line, Tommy, is going to be – there's going to be a big influx of people coming off unemployment as those enhanced benefits start to go Oof. away. So yeah. there's a you know, appointment with destiny coming in September – where a bunch of people are going to see lower paychecks and are all going to be flushing back. Remember, there's 9 million uh, open jobs and there's millions of people still collecting enhanced benefits. So I think there's going to be a, you know, a, a big meeting down the road here about another month and a half, and I think that will set the tone for the fall, Tommy. So, you know, no, I, the, 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 the short answer to your question is one week does not – concern me it is going to be pretty cool man when it's almost time um you know i was saying on my program earlier this week kevin say it's it's almost like put up or shut up it seems a little excessive but as in we can all theorize the you know theoretically right these come but the benefits have been around for so long man and that there's been all this built-in optimism maybe rightfully so in the market but boy it's time for that optimism to start becoming a reality man if the S&P is warranted to trading at 43.51. We got the NASDAQ 100 at about 15,000, man. Um, and the Dow, of course, pushing 35,000, all of them right near all-time highs. So the story out there, Kevin, how about uh, some of these Chinese stocks, man? So you got Diddy out there. Now it comes down that they're going to talk about uh, an unprecedented penalty, basically just for pushing forward and going public. Uh, all of these stocks, man, rightfully so, under a lot of pressure. I think the game has changed over there in China in a big way with uh, President Xi cracking down down in pretty epic fashion. What's your take on some of what's going on and whether it's, you know, Alibaba, Diddy over there, Jack Ma, of course, basically only coming out every few months to say hello uh, over in China? I think um, I can say that in my career, I've never traded uh, a Chinese stock. Why? I'm sure these companies are great. We, we, we cover them. We talk about them. But I'm not going to trade a, a stock that is controlled by a communist country. I mean, it's as much as they come here to raise capital and do things, I think we all just got a really good lesson in the difference between a democracy and communism, and that is they control what's happening. Look at Jack Ma. Yeah, you're right. He, you know, but at the end of the day, he doesn't control everything in his life. And Oof. I think that that is a lesson for everyone. And you, that doesn't mean you can't invest in these companies and trade them, but you got to be extremely careful for um, government getting involved in business like you're seeing here. It's one other variable that in my mind, and, and what I'm kind of getting in your mind, is pretty tough to quantify um, how you quantify a variable like that where you have the state of China controlling the companies. And I completely agree, man. Um, I think it was a wake-up call and a big deal and, and, and these companies, man. You know, I saw a headline a few a few weeks back as this was really unfolding, Kevin, saying, and I think it was an opinion piece, and I can't even remember the news organization, um, saying that the plan was backfiring. And I said to myself, backfiring? They don't understand, in my opinion, okay, this is my own take, folks, in terms of what is important over there for the people that are controlling China. I'd say that plan is going perfectly, in my opinion, in terms of the control that that country, you know, and right to the top of the top in terms of President Xi. Um, and I'd say it's working out pretty well in terms of those companies falling in the line pretty quickly over there in a big way. Uh, well, Kevin, I know we got some great stocks, as you said, coming up today. We got Intel. I'm jumping over to the Analyze tab on the Thinkorswim platform. They got a $2.40 move uh, coming out with their numbers after the bell tonight. Intel, of course, the chips, that'll be interesting. You pull up Intel. And it's remarkable, Kevin, you know, the, the range that this thing's been in, pulling back from almost $70, man, to 56 bucks on a weekly basis and then chopping around. Well, we look forward to the program. We look forward to the education, as always, Kevin. I can't wait to see what kind of trades you guys are going to be setting up at 11 o'clock today. All right, sounds good, Tommy. Can't wait, to, can't, can't wait to get into these things. Have a great day. You too, man. Take care. Folks, I know I say it every day, but we're coming into the season that you should be checking out the program Fast Market if you want to be in options at all. We all understand, and I say we all, it's very easy to understand some of the fundamental, simple natures of how options trade. It's just awesome the way they break down the different trades. In options, there's so many different ways to trade a single stock. You know, even if you're bullish, are you the one paying for premium or are you the one selling premium? You can do both of those with a bullish bias. 
right? What's your volatility preference? What's your volatility bias as you're going into it? Are you gonna be paying for premium for volatility? Or are you gonna be the one selling? And are you gonna be bearish? Are you gonna be bullish? And we're just coming into a great season of earnings. We got Intel, we got Snapchat uh, after the bell. Snapchat, jumping over to the Analyze tab. You jump over to the Earnings tab. They can tell you every single quarter, folks, in terms of applied historical volatility and at the money straddle, how they performed, okay? And then that, you talk about the expected move. Snapchat, you're talking about a $5.06 move for only a $63 stock. The tech stock's always got some big volatility in there because it's not like there's some company handing out dividends on a regular basis. They are factoring in growth, and sometimes the market capitalization of those companies can vary greatly if those earnings miss or beat in any way. So Snapchat, $5.06. We'll go over some of the companies that have earnings next week. I think we got like Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Facebook. We'll check it out. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up by three points on the open, trading at 43.54. NASDAQ catching a slight bit up 20 points. You get the Dow negative by eight points right now, 34,681. And the Russell negative by just seven. Jumping back to crude, we got crude bouncing right back to the $71 area. When positive 62 cents at 70.92 and gold contract negative two dollars right now right at 1800 all right jumping around to some of the stories with the news in terms of earnings uh dominoes so they have 3.5 percent same store sales growth in the u.s for its second quarter the number that's pretty cool 
and they should do this for every single earnings because that's the comparison that really gives you some context of how they've grown their business prior to COVID. On a two-year basis, same store sales, 19.6% same store sales growth. That is a tremendous number, folks. Topping quarterly revenue uh, expectations from Wall Street, the numbers, 306 a share. Revenue, 1.03 billion. They were looking for 972 million. They make $116 million or 306 a share. Uh, I guess they had made $118 million a year earlier. That was during the pandemic when everybody was ordering delivery. Uh, net sales rose 12.2%, beating expectations. And yeah, on a two-year basis, 19.6% for the quarter. The segment's strong performance this quarter is a sign that the company may be able to avoid a sales slump stemming from pizza fatigue. I ordered Domino's at some point in the last month or two. I'm a big fan. Those, those thin crust pizzas they have, delicious. Um, Outside of the U.S., Domino's same-store sales jumped 13.9% compared to a year ago, 152 compared to two years ago. International business was hurt by temporary restaurant closures in markets with stricter lockdowns than the U.S. Many markets have stricter lockdowns than the U.S., especially at this point. Worldwide, they added 238 net new locations, including 35 in its home market. Quite the number. Domino's has been a rocket ship. Ever since like 2010, to be fair, look at this run. We're talking about we're up 5.2%, uh, accelerating higher. You put this thing on a five-year weekly, you go from 143 during COVID. You had the brief pullback down to 300. But look at the run we've had just since March, right? Everybody was a little bit worried, overdoing things that maybe, just maybe, some of these companies that accelerated during COVID wouldn't be able to hold those gains. You go from 320, we're now pushing 500, folks. 497.99, you back it up to even further than that. I talked about it on my show yesterday. I believe it was 2010. Yes, 2010, I believe. Uh, their CEO, new CEO, took the helm. He was there until 2010, until about 2018. Turned this company around dramatically, turned it into a technology company. You think in the early 2010s, okay, he was transforming it to have technology as in ordering online the pizza tracker technology you could see when they took the order when they were making it when it was done when it was on its way all ahead of uber eats uh and it paid off magnificently magnificently and it still is uh, a lot of what he put in place is probably paying dividends still as this stock has now accelerated from 250 up to 500. all right what else we got you want to see a chart how about Crocs? My goodness, up 10.5% on their numbers today, trading at 132.60. Now, this is a monthly chart going all the way back. You had the initial run up in 2018. Look at this. I mean, craziness. You were up to 75 bucks. Everybody thought Crocs were going BK. You're down to 79 cents. You make it back up in terms of 2011 to about 32 bucks. Nope, Crocs going BK again. Down to $6. We make it to a low during COVID of $8.40. Now putting it on a little bit shorter time frame. There's a three-year weekly. And my goodness, that's quite an acceleration in upward territory. I mean, we were just trading in April at 80 bucks, And Crocs trading at 132 in terms of their numbers. Record revenue, raising the full-year guidance amid strong demand. I have kids in my house, folks. They got Crocs, uh, especially for kids, right? You think... Um, you know, they're, they're rubber. You can wash them off if they're running outside. They're sandals. They're great. Not exactly the most stylish shoes. We were just talking to our man, Kevin Hanks, and I watch Fast Market every day, folks. And I don't think I'm giving away anything that Kevin hasn't given away on the show. He does not understand the Crocs phenomenon. He calls their earnings fake news occasionally. And I kid, but he's uh, it's it's the style factor of them, folks. Regardless, the sales speak for themselves. Uh, I don't think I like the style of a Crocs, but man, there's plenty that do. How about record revenue, $640 million. Uh, earnings, 223 a share. I mean, look at the revenue beat. That's a staggering number to end up with 85 extra million dollars. Is that 85? 75. 75 million extra dollars. Excuse me. 75 million extra dollars in 90 days, right? That means basically every single day they were taken in almost... 800 grand to, to get to that 75 million number that they beat. And a percentage wise, folks, if you're running a business and you're trying to plan for revenue that you're going to take in to, to run that business efficiently and you're planning to take in 565 million and you end the 90 days with 640 million, that is a sweet spot to be in in a big way. Um, revenues in the second quarter grew by 93 percent 
from 331 a year earlier. Just staggering. Digital sales grew 25.4%. They, they are more than one out of every $3 of revenue compared to 56.1. Obviously, people are back in stores, physical stores, buying things. Direct-to-consumer sales grew almost 80% compared to last year and 86.4% compared to 2019. Um, it's just gangbusters across the board. And I tell you, folks, they do. I kid, you know, stylish. Not sure you'd call them stylish, but they're, they're, they're close. And on kids, I think they look great. I do. Uh, you just won't catch me in the adult version of Crocs anytime soon. You probably won't catch our man Kevin Hanks in them either. All right. Jumping around to what else we got going on. Back to a 15-minute chart in terms of stocks with their numbers. Uh, we talked about some of the airlines, but getting into some of what they had to say. Um, so American and Southwest posted second quarter profits, getting a lift from federal aid and surge in travel demand. Now, these airlines, it's interesting to see the run that they've had, but check out a little bit of a give back. You got Southwest down 3.2%. You have American down 3.3%. United was out, out with their numbers yesterday. They're giving back some of the gains with the rest of the airlines. Delta as well, down a bit this morning on the open, down 2.7. They've all had a resurgence. The cruise line's pulling back as well. Excuse me, cruise line's down about 4.2 for Carnival. And man, you think airlines are volatile. How about the cruise ships uh, recently in a big way? Now, what's going on to, to, you know, we all are somewhat aware at least of what's going on with COVID. You should be, folks, if you're in the market, okay? This is not getting political in any way. Um, you look at some of the numbers, okay? In terms of the vaccination rate, and I'm, I encourage you folks, all right? Being in Florida especially, the numbers are particularly harsh. I mean, we're dealing with seven, 8,000 cases a day. That's as of last Friday. That number is probably going up right now. We're going to be approaching probably 10,000 cases a day when they release the next update tomorrow. They only get weekly updates in Florida. Um, you look at the hospitalization rate in the U.S., okay? Now, this is uh, the April peak here. This data for, is from April to July, just showing the rise we have. And that is on a national basis. So right now you're talking about we're pushing on a seven-day average about 25,000, give or take cases. Okay, we're up to recently to about 27. You were up at 45,000. Okay, and that spike was just after April. That was about a mid to late April spike that we had there. Now, putting it on a national level, okay, hospitalizations, because, folks, cases, I agree, cases are not, not the number here. Okay, especially in Florida, though, we are... There is a risk parameter that hospitals could be in jeopardy of facing more people than they might be able to handle or it's it's something to keep your eye on. OK, I'm not going to sell fear because you should go out and get vaccinated. You'll be fine. But we're approaching this April spike of forty five thousand hospitalizations. And folks, the number is rising pretty quickly on that number. We were just down to a seven day average of sixteen thousand cases in terms of hospitalizations. And we're already at twenty five thousand. All right, so we'll talk about it a little bit more when we get back. But you start seeing some restrictions put in place, and you're going to see this market react. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps flat right now. We got the NASDAQ 100 catching a little bit of a bid. Don't sell that NASDAQ 100 short. It's got a bid every day, folks. I kid. But 14,888, we're bumping up near the highs where we are right now. You're talking about the Dow, negative by 59 points. Dow, though, within only about 350. We're 1% away from all-time highs in the Dow. I mean, for all the talk about the Delta variant, folks, right, in terms of early in the week, Man, it's remarkable how we resurgence in a big way, but it's just something to keep your eye on. So I was talking about it prior to the break, all right, and I don't think there's a lot of people that are completely aware in terms of the hospitalization rate and how it's spiking. And we're nowhere near in terms of where things could get dicey in terms of actually forcing any type of shutdown. And the only way that's going to happen, folks, is that if hospitals get overrun, and that is the only way that that should probably happen at this point okay people have an opportunity to go out and get the vaccine i encourage you to do so folks the people who ended up in hospitals rightfully so are people who are unvaccinated okay we are at a point that we're talking about vaccination rates somewhere around 50 percent of the u.s population all right you're talking about 170 million people give or take okay approaching that level of vaccinations even at a 95 percent efficacy folks you're still going to be talking about if you got 170 million people that are vaccinated millions of people that could potentially be vaccinated get the virus and then potentially spread it to somebody that is not vaccinated and ends up in a hospital okay the hospitalization rate i know people who work in hospitals around florida folks okay and florida is its own animal right now unfortunately when it comes to cases but they might have to make some decisions already because not only are they approaching it, what you have to consider in this, and I'm talking to you as a trader right now, folks, all right? I think you all know where I stand in the vaccine. It's unfortunate people are putting themselves at risk by making decisions based on bad information that is spearheaded out there by many powerful politicians, unfortunately, okay? But there aren't as many healthcare workers anymore in this state, okay? What healthcare workers have just had to go through for the last 16 years months has forced some of those people out of that industry especially forced them out of positions okay whether it's respiratory therapists in particular that were so in the heat of things going on so it might be even more strenuous on some of those hospitals in areas that there aren't the healthcare workers that were available early on now yeah you can bring in people from out of state etc all right but percentage wise folks okay the the cases i mean we just jumped from 11,000 cases on a weekly basis in florida and in a two-week period, you jump to 45,000. Folks, if that happens on an exponential basis, it will not take long for that to occur. So keep your eye on it, because at some point, the market might start caring about it. Today's not the day, but it's something I started thinking about in the last couple of days, because unfortunately, numbers are rising pretty quick across the board. 
All right, jumping around to what else we have going on. Bitcoin really catching a bid back from the doldrums of 29,215. We're up at 32,100. Let's jump around to some of the tech stocks this morning as we get the NASDAQ 100 catching a bid, and it just don't stop. Look at Microsoft. Is that an all-time high? It sure is. Microsoft up 1.5%, making an all-time high today. Let's check out Apple. Apple shares right now up about eight tenths percent. Amazon shares up almost a full percent right now at 36.18. Facebook shares up about two tenths. We get Snapchat earnings after the bell down about two tenths ahead of their numbers. Now check it out the numbers in terms of when we get their earnings, all right? Snapchat, as I said, after the bell tonight. We'll jump around to some of the tech stocks though. Microsoft, I believe that's Tuesday the 27th. Yes, it is. So Tuesday the 27th, Microsoft's out with their numbers. We get Google the same day, Microsoft and Google on Tuesday, Facebook on Wednesday, Amazon on Thursday, and Tesla on Monday. Big week of earnings, a whole slate of big tech stocks that'll be actively traded. The NASDAQ 100 should be rocking and rolling. It's already been a pretty big earnings season in a big way. Um, you jump around trying to figure out which article I had up here that talked about it. Where are we? Uh, here we go. This is the one. So far, 15% of the S&P 500's reported earnings. We know we're early in the season. 88% beating. It's been a strong number so far. Um, of the companies that have reported, 84% have topped revenue expectations so far. The big ones coming up next week, they will matter in a big way, and we'll see how that shakes out as it begins. Really, Tuesday, Microsoft out with their numbers, and Google out with their numbers as well. Now, you get into, let's just take a look in terms of the if you take a look at the options, I mean, you don't have to wait, folks, to trade these companies until earnings. Um, but if you're trading it prior to earnings, you're obviously opening yourself up to movements prior to that number. Now, you look at the expected move, right? If you're going to go through next Friday, so that's going to encompass not only Microsoft earnings, okay, but that's going to encompass the other tech stocks, which could provide volatility for the entire index, okay? And Microsoft, for that move, you're talking about a $10.63 move through next week. So that's going to encompass this week. It's going to encompass next week. Their earnings on Tuesday. You're talking about almost a 4% move in either way. Let's check out Google shares, see what they're pricing in right now. Google, $2,662 stock. You're pricing in about $116 move. And you see the jump here, right? You want action through Friday? It's only implying $26. You want action through next week, which has their earnings and every other tech stock? How about $116? Rightfully so. If you're the person that would be selling options, folks, you better be demanding more premium for giving somebody the ability to hold that option with a defined risk through an earnings announcement. Uh, we jump to Amazon shares. We're talking about a $191 move. Nothing too dramatic when you think about where they are and where they've been uh, for that stock. And let's take a look at Tesla out early next week as well. You're talking about quite a move there for Tesla, right? $62. That's almost a 10% move priced in there in a big way. All right. Jumping around to other headlines we have out here. So let's get into um, where were we? Yeah, Uber. So they're going to buy... Um, Transplace, $2.25 billion. This number out early this morning. What time is this dated at? Nine o'clock, right when I started the program. Uh, Uber Freight. Now, this is interesting. Uber Freight. Let's see how Uber's trading. Now, we have Uber in my newsletter, folks. I have some news, Uber, for disclosure. Uh, I did spike higher initially, pulled it back. We're negative by about two tenths percent. Um, it's always interesting when you have this type of action in terms of a company going out, paying for another company. Probably a good idea in the long term but they're paying for it right now. Is there gonna be costs that are associated with it, right? Is that gonna hurt the earnings on the front end of side? It's always possible, but Uber starts getting into freight in a big way, that's another avenue. I mean, they're already, one of the reasons I loved Uber early on, folks, if there's ever a company where their company name becomes a verb in the English language, Google's one of the best descriptions out there of that type of company, right? The name of the company becomes a verb in its own right. Uber's there, all right? I'm going to Uber to the airport, right? It has become a verb in the English language. You don't say I'm going to Lyft. You don't say that. Lyft's a great company out there. I got no problem with Lyft, but you don't say it. You say you say I'm going to take an Uber too, but people say I'm going to, you know, I'm going to Uber to the game. I'm going to take an Uber to the game. Point being, you get the point, right? They've entrenched themselves in the English language, which is not hard to do in a big way. Uh, you get into where they will be in freight. That's an exciting deal. So you got $750 million in common stock of Uber, a rare move for Uber, which spent the last year shedding its profit-eating self-driving unit. 
um, and flying taxi segment. So they kind of selling off some of those areas as they trimmed up to make sure they made it during COVID. Maybe this is the flip side as they uh, look to spend a little bit as the economy opens back up. Nonetheless, you got Uber basically flat. Let's jump over to Dash, DoorDash right now. See how they're trading. DoorDash up about 1.5% on uh, the open for them. All right, folks, stay tuned. We come right back. We'll go over what else we have for the week. We'll check out some of those companies. We'll see how Intel is trading ahead of their earnings coming up after the bell. Stay tuned. Folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave. Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we got the S&Ps negative by four points. We got the NASDAQ positive by 40. Market's getting a little bit of a pullback right now. Dow negative by about 75. The Russell continuing the volatile trend. We're 35 points off the all-time, uh, not all-time, off the highs this morning, I should say, at 2205 right now. And we'll jump to, so Intel. Out with their numbers after the bell. Pretty small open right now. Intel kind of waiting to see where we go. We're negative by four pennies. We're trading at 56.18. You take a look at Intel on a three-year weekly basis. As I mentioned to Kevin, we were talking at the top of the hour. This thing was just near $68. Look at that run we had from 45, right? 
Uh, didn't they come in with a new CEO, a new plan? Seemed to get a little bit of ahead of itself there in terms of they need to turn things around. Just getting a new CEO doesn't do it by itself. Uh, we're trading at 5608. You jump over to the Analyze tab. We're talking about a $2.86 move priced into their numbers on the numbers tonight. About a 5% move uh, on their numbers after the bell. And you jump over to the Earnings tab. Yes, July 22nd, they'll be out coming out with their numbers after the bell tonight. Jumping around to some of the other, let's see how AMD is trading. Quite a different story on their chart. We trade from 15 bucks in terms of all the way back of 2018. You make a high of $99. We've given back some of the gains we had. We're up to 95 bucks just in early this month. So weekly chart we got up here. We're sitting at 89 right now. AMD continued strength across the board there. And uh, we're going to jump around. Let's check around the commodities. Crude. Up 25 cents. Now, this is a headline I didn't quite get to. There's a lot going on this morning, folks. Um, but I did have up here. Where am I? Come on. There we go. Oh, that's a shame on me. Oh, what a bummer. I'll get it. There we go. We'll end it on this one. How about the Saudi prince of oil prices vows to drill every last molecule. The most powerful man in petroleum navigates on really OPEC plus nations, huge swings in price and production, and the end of fossil fuels. But they're going to drill it all, folks. That's what he says. So pay attention to that uh, at a time that we got crude trading at $70.54. All right, folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Start your day with me. Stay tuned. we got a man, Basil Chapman, coming up next. And don't forget, folks, the front page of TFNN.com, you can head over to the services tab. Basil's got the second leg of his webinar coming up next week, multi-day webinar. You can still sign up for that, folks. He's got the archive of the first session, six and a half hours, immediately available. You get a month of his newsletter as well. Check it out and stay tuned for Basil. Live programming all day at TFNN, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.